Douglas fir has two needle cast diseases that you need to know because uh, Michigan growers or growers in the Great Lakes area have both of these. And that is, the first one is rhabdocline needle cast and the second one is Swiss needle cast. In the 1990s, rhabdocline needle cast began, became almost epidemic throughout the Great Lakes. Uh, wherever Douglas fir was grown, we started seeing uh, massive amounts of rhabdocline. Uh, rhabdocline, uh, like all other uh, needle cast diseases, will be released from their fruiting bodies uh, in the springtime. The spores will infect the needles, uh, the elongating, fresh, soft needles, go through the entire summer without you really knowing it's even there. And then the following year, the fruiting, bo the fruiting bodies will emerge from the surface of the needles, the spores will spread, and the disease cycle starts over again. But then those needles that were infected that previous year will fall off after they've allowed the spores to come off. Uh, Swiss needle cast does the same thing. The, the symptoms are different between rhabdocline and Swiss. Rhabdocline are brown splotches on the green needles. Uh, you can see it on both sides of the needles, although under a dissecting scope, the actual fruiting bodies come off one side or the other, not on both. But the symptoms you'll see, the brown splotches are on both sides of the needle. Uh, Swiss needle cast is like little dots of pepper on the, uh, on the needles. So a little bit different um, symptoms, but uh, completely different fungi, but moving about the same time. In Michigan in the last few years, rhabdocline has been much worse than Swiss. Swiss hasn't been as big a problem. Spray applications, horticultural management, exactly the same way for both. Uh, if you don't have rhabdocline, you can probably uh, allow Swiss to build up a little bit. It's not as, uh, as damaging. You don't really need to worry about it as much until maybe you're three years from harvest. Then you need to pay much more attention to Swiss. Rhabdocline, you need to worry about that each year because it can uh, really uh, infect an entire tree and reduce the uh, number of needles and therefore the, uh, the thriftiness of the, of the tree is at stake and its growth rate is at stake. There is a seed source available, actually two seed sources that are available, that are resistant to rhabdocline needle cast. Just the genetics of the, of the, of the seed source uh, makes or allows the tree to be resistant to the infection. And those two seed sources are Shushwap and Deep Mountain. Uh, as far as I know, all the other seed sources of Douglas fir are susceptible to rhabdocline. When you plant Shushwap or Deep Mountain, you will not have needle cast disease caused by rhabdocline. However, you'll still get Swiss, and so it's important that you monitor for Swiss if you haven't been putting on sprays that control rhabdocline or Swiss. Uh, needle cast disease. Uh, I probably need to warn you that the Shushwap uh, seed source, those trees grow a little bit slower. Uh, you need to be aware of that. So uh, both of those are, are diseases, needle cast diseases that you need to manage, you need to watch for. Uh, you cut off the branches, take them into the uh, shed and take a look at the number of needles that are infected uh, per tree and uh, then you'll be able to, to determine if you need to manage that with a uh, fungicide spray or not. And again, that fungicide spray would go on when those spores are being released and that is in mid-spring. <laughs>